high-performance electro-hybrid cell boat in the ruins of the old Soviet bloc? We like to think so. So we're here to meet uh, V-Cabarets and Core Things who's building their first boat here in Split. Our boat actually. Um, let's go meet these guys. When we thought about this boat that I want to personally build, I thought the main issue for all these guys like me who want to sail a boat fast, stable, in comfort is the size. And the biggest discussion in the beginning for me with myself was how big the size will be. So we came out with 40 foot. And we planned it all around this and said, okay, to owner's house maybe, and the performance. And then we, we discussed all this uh, to make the best boat out of it. And out came 44 feet for more stability, for more speed, for more buoyancy, for all this extra uh, hydrodynamic and sailing performance that we wanted. Almost before we thought about size, um, I came back to my own roots where in very young days I was um, involved in a lot of uh, recuperative and uh, alternative energy things on land. So uh, nowadays that hybrid cars are just common, I thought we should integrate that into a boat. At the same time this is a big, big advantage for the balance of a boat because it does not it's not being a pendulum like the heavy motors in the back and you have to counterweigh it, but you have everything in the middle. You can combine everything around a center of gravity. Makes the boat move much, much nicer, not against the wave, very comfortable. And in the end, if the boat is light, what we also tried to achieve to make a very light boat, it will be very fast, still moving nicely. One of the guys I got to know was Francois Pérus. He impressed me a lot. He was a young guy who took the adventure to build a boat by himself in Turkey. The boat that he built is really something I liked. Uh, it, it has got underwater lines, 
that I thought, even though I'm amateur in this, uh, I understood where they aim to, and I was thrilled by this that he could um, construct a boat that is carrying load and still be very, very fast. So, um, and it turned out that he's a very, very sympathetic guy. I asked him whether he wants to do something new with me, basing on his knowledge and combining it with my um, aspects to a, to a maximum size, but still nicely to sail single-handed or double-handed sailing boat, and he agreed. But one of the unique feature, feature of the VCAT 44 is uh, probably the, its hull bottom, uh, which is one of the most important aspects of the boat, obviously. And uh, we have a very uh, flat, low rocker uh, hull shape. That means uh, the, the, the rocker line is, uh, if you look at the boat uh, on the profile and you look at uh, what is the line of uh, the, the shape of the keel line, even though we don't have a keel on huh, our cat, of course. Uh, this line, to achieve good speed and uh, reduce pitching, this rocker should be uh, as minimum as possible. Because when you have a lot of rocker, the Bernoulli effect uh, is even greater. That means that when you f the, the faster you go, the more depression you create under your, your hull and the boat gets uh, sucked down in the water, basically. That's uh, typical if you look at the old mono hulls, uh, they reach their top speed when they have the wave at the front, the wave at the back. They are stuck in, their, in between these, those two waves and they cannot accelerate anymore. Um, and so the, the idea with the VCAT is, okay, it's not exactly the same kind of hull because we have what we call a narrow hull. The, radio, the ratio sorry, between the width and the length of the hull has nothing compared to, uh, to a mono hull, obviously. But uh, still, the old philosophy for hull design in cats was to do very narrow and very round section hull to minimize uh, the drag and to supposedly improve tacking, for example. But the last experimentation proved that it's more important to have a low rocker, uh, low rocker hull with a very flat aft and you will improve your potential of speed with a really, really huge manner. Um, and yeah, so the, the, this kind of shape of hull definitely comes from the, 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 the racing multi hulls but it has not been very much implemented on cruising boats. I honestly, I don't know why, because uh, all, from all of my experience, it definitely it, it works. And uh, it's not just about the speed, it's also about the behavior of the boat in, uh, in the sea. Uh, if you have less uh, pitching, it's more comfortable, uh, it's better for the boat. And finally, for example, if you have a gust, uh, the, that's one of the most good consequences of this kind of hull shape is that when you have a gust, the boat, instead of being, you know, die, instead of diving in the water, it just accelerates and you reduce also the loads on the boat because it's more interesting to gain speed than a hill go underwater. It's way better for the, for the structure and the integrity of the boat. So the VCAT 44 is built at uh, what we call a general uh, term composite. Uh, more uh, precisely, the boat is built out of sandwich in PVC foam, glass, uh, glass fibers, and vinyl ester resin with carbon reinforcement. So each of those elements alone don't have a lot of uh, strength. If you take uh, foam by alone, it's pretty light. You can uh, punch it with your nail, uh, you make a hole. Uh, so the boat is strong because we give inertia in between the, the glass skins with uh, the foam. Uh, and those uh, glass fibers and carbon fibers are very, very strong, especially in traction. But they work only if they are well positioned. They have to go with the load. I can illustrate that with this piece of carbon. So this is, I don't know how many fibers there are, but they, don't have a, they, they are not a lot. It's impossible to break. However, if I do a knot, it breaks by itself. 
That's to illustrate that those, those fibers are very strong in traction, but they are not very strong in shear. And when I make a knot, I create loads that are in the, in the direction that is not in the direction of the fibers of the carbon. And it breaks instantly without exerting any, any, any force. Philosophy about design. In, in, in terms of boat building, I think that there is a lot of people that uh, work in boat building and they look at other boats when they design new boats. And I think that um, I think that people and, and especially designers should look at uh, a lot of other things that we spend time in uh, during the day or, or in our lives. So it's not just uh, it's not just boats that we spend time in. And I think that a, a lot of spaces that we live in, we make uh, comfortable with certain parts or, 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 or objects. And, and I think that um, all those things should be taken in consideration when you build a boat because it becomes no, a new home, and uh, so I'm trying to when I when I when I design an interior for a boat, I'm trying to um, really look at look at take inspiration from from uh, interior design of, of, of uh, residential houses and, and and even places that are maybe public, such as uh, restaurants or hotels or some because all of those have different factors that. Uh, that make a place comfortable and livable and, 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 and welcome. And I think those things should be taken in consideration if you, if you also design a boat because the boat in the end is um, serving a lot of purpose. You, know, you, have, uh, you have a living space for the owner but you also invite guests which come over or sometimes the boat gets chartered out for other people so it's, it becomes like a um, hospitality place. So there's a lot of things that, that come into this and I think that uh, for, for this reason you should also look for other sources of inspiration when you, when you design a space. Uh, we thought about how, how we could name it and uh, the name should reflect what we thought about the boat. So we came over Da Vinci's Vitruvio, which is the man in the circle and it, it <clears throat> symbols very nicely the mankind measurements so this was for me the symbol for building a boat this is which is versatile which is good for the mankind's abilities uh, i want to be in safety i want to operate all systems without any help if needed so yes we named it Vitruvio in the beginning when he started the project, but then we thought maybe it could be like a V, like vita Vitality, like Vitesse, like all these nice Vs you might know. So it's a VCAT. Hey Jan, I should think you named it V for uh, Vu, and that's why you call it V Catamarans. What do you think, Isabel? I don't think so. <laughs> no. Uh, so, uh, Building a Dream for Ruins is about these guys coming together to build this new innovative boat mm -hmm. in the ruins of the old Soviet bloc in Croatia. So, you saw some of that footage in the video. So, that's a pretty amazing boat they're building, so we're pretty excited about that. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what we found out from since the last time we, we shared a video with you guys was that, um, that the boat now is delayed uh, for three months, and so we won't get it until now February, which I think works out okay for us. It's still, still winter. Yeah, winter time, you can't really sail much, but fingers crossed, it's end of February, early yeah. March. Like building a boat, it's always a little bit challenging. There's a lot of different elements of you know, supply chain and design and stuff you still work out. So, it is a first boat, it's a very unique boat, and so we're excited about that. Uh, the next episode we're going to share with you is uh, it's also from our last visit in, uh, last last spring as well in Split. So it's a little bit of a tour through Split. Uh, so that'll be a really quick video. Then we'll be back here to share with you what we're doing here in Tromsø, Norway. So that's exciting as well. So you know, if you uh, want to find out what's going on with our boat or if you're interested in what happens next, uh, hit the subscribe button below. And if you like this episode, give us a thumbs up. All right. See you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. -bye.